Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Almost to the end of the week here. Looking forward to getting getting a good start on the weekend with uh, a lot of little projects here and there. Today's video is going to be a mail day video. Got a couple of a uh, couple of areas that cards have come in from. First one is eBay. We will get to that here right shortly. I'm just unpacking the rest of the cards that I have got. The second portion of the mail day, which is the 95% of it, is a mail day from Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. I was in a couple of breaks of his recently, as well as an auction that he had on his channel. And I'll show you all the awesome purchases that I picked up over there. But first, my eBay purchase, and I've never bought one of these before, so I was super excited to get it. But as a press pass, or not press pass, um, Panini Torque plate, yellow plate of Bobby Allison, one of one. Got a super sweet deal on this, so I've never bought one of these one of one, so that's going in my PC for now. May, it may become available in the future, but we will see. It was just uh, a really good price, and I couldn't pass it up, so uh, that's just how I roll. I see something, I like it, I get it. So let's go ahead and move forward. These are, again, just random cards from a couple of his recent breaks over there on Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys, and an auction that he had. Was that Saturday or Thursday? I think it was last Thursday. But at any rate, um, maybe it wasn't Thursday, it was Wednesday, it was before Thanksgiving. Um, so anyway, let's start off with a 91 Max Update set. We will do a review of this one at some point in time. You see the checklist there on the back. And this set was made as a complement to the 1991 Max base set. And when Max would produce the cards, they would usually release the cards mid-season. So a lot of the cards would have the driver's previous team on that card or a previous sponsor on the card. So they came up with the update set as a way to uh, say, hey, you know, look, this driver doesn't drive for company A anymore. They drive for company B. So that was really nice. Got this uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. gold signature replica or facsimile gold signature press pass. Kind of a jumbo card numbered 1003 of 5003. Very nice there. You see it's from 1998, 50th anniversary. Might have to put that one on that little stand in the back. Then I've got some just random cards and such from the different... Uh, got some Jamie McMurray cards who I've got a home for these, a uh, friend of mine, Jim, that uh, viewer, he is a big J-Mac fan, so I picked up some of these, there's a couple other J-Mac cards coming up I picked up for him, we have an Earnhardt Silver 20 Donruss Parallel, Rusty Wallace, uh, is that Absolute, this looks like it says Absolute, I can't see it, but it, yes, it is Absolute, from 2017, this is probably a numbered card, Yes, there you see the number on it, 72 out of 99, very cool. Kind of a, a, a numbers freak here on the, on the cards. I enjoy numbered cards, so there's a Dale Jr. Donruss, 618 out of 99, the Cracked Ice Parallel from 2017, I believe that's what it says. Might as well just take my glasses off, they appear to be only for, uh, it's only a prop on my head. Up next, we've got a Rusty Wallace, 47 out of 99, Superstar Vision. And I like this card. It's kind of translucent. You can kind of see through it. I always think those cards are kind of fun. We have an orange or yellow parallel, Dale Jr., 298 of, two, 298 of 299, or 299 out of 299. I believe it's 298, nonetheless. Then we have a Danica Optic Parallel. I believe that's the... Not Pulsar, but it's one of the optics from 20, that's 87 throwback. So it would be 2020. Then this nice 20 years of Cup Champions, Winston Motorsports hologram. There's the uh, checklist on the back. And I actually, and it will be upcoming in a Flea Market Finds video that I'll be doing soon actually acquired a set of these in a large purchase from a flea market. So now I have the hologram, I guess you could call it the cover card, but I do have that to go with that set now, so very cool. I do have a Randy Orton, uh, Matt Relic, very nice. There's the other J-Matt card I was speaking of. You see some stitching in it. Um, 
numbered 4 out of 10. Very, very sweet. So I'll get those set aside for my buddy Jim. I'll probably do a video for him too on the Jamie McMurray cards that I've got because I know he's a big fan of J. Mac being from Missouri himself. Uh, Matt Di Benedetto autograph. This was actually, I believe, from the break, maybe? I don't... I, I've slept since then, so it's numbered 31 out of 55. Very nice. And then a nice Ty Majeski. I know this one came courtesy of the randomizer that he does. Go back and watch his breaks. They're really fun. You're guaranteed to... Everybody's guaranteed to walk home with something. Not necessarily always a hit, but you're guaranteed cards. I know some other breakers... The only cards that you're guaranteed is hits, and they keep the base set. That's what I've heard. I've never seen it, but that, that's my understanding. We have Brian Vickers, 2009 Press Pass. Of course, 2009, Brian won at Michigan driving for Team Red Bull. I was actually at that race. Joey Logano, dual operator. I believe this was 20, yeah, 2010 Stealth. I can see it now. 2010 Jeff Gordon. And we have a nice Dale Jr. blowing smoke. Uh, die cut by Prism. Regan Smith during his Furniture Row days. This is just when Furniture Row was starting to gain traction. Of course, he won their first race at Darlington in 2011, I believe. Tony Stewart. That might, I thought it was a checklist, but it's not. We've got one Pablo Montoya. Sam Hornish Jr. Former Indy 500 winner. Got a couple of nice Tony Stewart Press Pass Premium 09s. Another Dale Jr. blowing smoke. Did good on the juniors this round. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Then got one of these little minis of Bobby Labonte. Got a Juan Pablo Montoya. There you see JPM at his finest. Another Brian Vickers. Jeff Burton. David, oh, I'm sorry, David Rudman. Scott Legacy Jr. And a nice card of Martin Truex Jr. Winner Circle. Is this one numbered? It is not. It's just the Prism variation. I think I had spot four in that uh, break, if I remember correctly. Definitely a fun break. Do have a... I believe, I believe I got this one in the randomizer, too. This uh, Denny Hamlin relic. Then we have Jack Ingram. Hall of Fame card. Put that with the set that I'm trying to build. It's kind of in disarray right now, but all the cards are together. Martin Truex Jr. during his DEI days. Machines. That, uh, that's David Reagan. UPS Ford for Roush Racing back in the uh, 2011 era. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Pull away from the camera here. I think I'm getting a little close. Juan Pablo Montoya again. Driving for Ganassi. Chris Buescher. Front Row Motorsports Days. John West Townley. What's that? I can't remember the name of that team. I think it was Athenian Motorsports. You can kind of see it right there. I believe it was a team his dad started. Of course, his dad, Tony Townley, is a founder or somebody that's really, really high up for the Zaxby's chain. You get a chance, go eat at Zaxby's. They do have some really, really good chicken. Matt Kenseth. We have Tom Sneva, 1983 Indy 500 winner. Another Hall of Fame card, Cotton Owens. Longtime car owner and engine builder and chassis, but he did everything. He even drove for a while, I believe. We have Dale Earnhardt Jr. celebrating a win. I'm not sure what race that is. Maybe it looks like Daytona. Probably a qualifying race. Brad Keselowski. Dale Jr. I'm not going to turn these sideways. There's David Rudeman. We finally seen him. Kyle Busch. In his own truck, sponsored by Mikasuki, uh, Mikasuki Indians down in Florida. Joey Logano, another Dale Jr., Roberto Guerrero. Uh, Roberto, in his first four Indy 500s from 84 to 88, finished second, third, fourth, and second, and then crashed out really early in 1989. I'm sorry, 84, 85, 86, 87. He crashed out early in 88. I apologize. But he did finish second, third, fourth, and second. Had a chance to win in 1987 and hit a, a tire that came off, I believe it was Tony Bettenhausen's car. But it was one of the Bettenhausen brothers, Tony or Gary. And he hit the uh, tire between turn three and four, launched into the grandstands, and killed a spectator, Lyle Kurtenbach. And that was the last spectator fatality at the Speedway. 
that I'm aware of. There may have been another one, and I just can't remember it right offhand. Roberto also was the Indy 500 pole sitter in 1992 and spun out on the pay slaps. If you remember the 1992 500, it was very, very cold that day. I don't think the temperature got much above 55 degrees, maybe maybe closer to 60. Indy cars need heat. They need downforce. Uh, he spun out on the pay slap and finished 33rd in that race. So, sorry about that little history lesson, kind of got off in the weeds, but we don't get a lot of IndyCar stuff on here. When we do, we talk about it in depth, because we are just 30 minutes from the Speedway. Elliot Sadler, during his Gillette Everham days, another JPM, Dale Jr. finish line, very nice insert there, I believe. No, it's a base set card, just a short print. Dale, or Dale Jr., had Dale Jr. on the mind. We have Jeff Gordon, Press Pass Collector Series. Rusty Wallace, Martin Truex Jr. Another, is that Rusty or Brad? That's Brad, or no, it is Rusty. It's a prism card, and it was making me think it was Brad. Shame on me. So that is Rusty Wallace, uh, blowing smoke. Austin Dillon, giving some folks some high fives. Elliot Sadler, in the M&M's car for Robert Yates Racing. Eric Almarola during his short time at Joe Gibbs. Not many people probably remember Eric was a development driver for Joe Gibbs. Uh, there was a race in Milwaukee. Denny Hamlin couldn't make it to. Eric started. Eric qualified the car on the pole, started the race, was leading the race. Rockwell Automation officials said, no, we want Denny in the car. So the crew was going to leave Eric in. Rockwell said, no, we pay the bills. Put uh, Denny in the car. Denny did go on and win the race. Eric got credit for it. But he wasn't even, to my knowledge, at the track when uh, Victory Lane was going on. And then after that, he parted ways with Joe Gibbs Racing and then went on to be a development driver for DEI. Robbie Gordon, during his time as a car owner and a driver, there's a Jamie McMurray. We have a, what is this, winning ticket? Looks like uh, Kurt, I can't tell who that is, Carl Edwards. Jimmy Johnson... Passing game insert, perhaps. Nope, just a base set. Kevin Kogan. Uh, here, we, here we're going to go off in the weeds again with the IndyCar guys. Uh, Kevin was a... He was one of these guys that was a perennial up-and-coming driver. Um, famously crashed in the start of the 1982 Indy 500, taking out A.J. Foyt and Mario Andretti as the field was coming down for the green flag. He did come back to finish second in 1986 to Bobby Rahal, who passed him on a late race restart when he was leading, and then in 1989 had a vicious crash and hit the attenuator at the end of pit road, splitting the car in half, but he walked away virtually unscathed. So uh, throw in your Google machine, throw the, or not Google, YouTube, throw in your YouTube machine there, Kevin Kogan 1989-500 crash, it's, it's pretty brutal, but... Uh, he did walk away relatively unscathed, and he just kind of faded into anonymity. We have Jay Mack again. Looks like after his Brickyard win in 2010, which I was at that race. Very exciting race. Feel bad for JPM because he had that stolen from him. Kurt Busch. David Rudiman. Sorry about that. Just having difficulty reading there. Kerry Earnhardt in his Fitz Bradshaw days. And, of course, one of the co-owners of this car was Terry Bradshaw, legendary uh, Pittsburgh Steelers player. Paul Menard, Alan Kowicki, 1992 Cup Series champion. Of course, I forgot to peel off all my little stickers. We have uh, top speed, Carl Edwards. A couple more minis, Carl Edwards and Jamie Mack. And then our final card of the day is a numbered card, Garrett Smithley of uh, Absolute. Is that 2017? Yes, it is. So as you can see, we had an awesome mail day. So thanks again to Danny over at Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. I really appreciate the opportunity to get in on your breaks and in on your auctions and so on and so forth. Um, I'll be doing some videos for you here in the... Oh, I forgot about these. I can't believe I almost forgot about these. 1989 Max Uncut Sheets of Dennis Connor, who was Ken Schrader's crew chief at the time. Bill Elliott, Victory Lane in 1988. I cannot believe I almost forgot to show you guys these. Chad Little. Of course, he's in a motorcraft uniform, but he wasn't driving for Bud Moore. He was actually driving for Junie Donlevy at the time in 1989. 
and then Derek Cope, who would win the Daytona 500 the very next year, but not driving for this team. He was driving for Whitcomb Racing when he won the Daytona 500. I just glanced over. I almost forgot to put these in the video. So glad I looked over and seen them. But no, once again, let me get back to where I was going. Thank you, Danny, for letting me to get in all your breaks and all your auctions and all the fun stuff that you put together on, over on your channel. So uh, look forward to the other breaks that we're going to have this month over there. No, we're going to have a, I think, a, did you say a torque break? I know you got that prime or... I'm I'm just so so confused right now with everything that's going on over there because um, I like getting involved in everything. I like everybody that goes over there and we all hang out and have a good time, talk about cards, talk about racing, talk about this, talk about that. So we are 269 subs. Excited to announce that. 500 just keeps coming closer and closer and closer. We will get there and we will do a giveaway when we get there. It will be a relic card giveaway. You guys know the rule. You know the rules. You know what's going on. i um, not going to sit here and talk about that anymore. But we're going to move forward tomorrow. We're going to open up some cards, but I don't know what we're going to open up yet. We might open the Prism. We might open the Donruss. We might open the two Torques because there's only one pack in each of those box. But we'll open up something tomorrow, ha uh, have something new for you guys to watch. So appreciate you guys all hanging in here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the new subscribers. Like the viewership going up. Eventually, maybe we'll do some auctions or do some breaks or do something on the channel. But I want to be able to you know, get my viewership up to where there's plenty of people that want to get in and, and do it. So thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Come see us tomorrow. Have a great night.